Now I think the majority of fans, even the ones that defend the show to no end, are of opinion that the show had a rushed ending. It feel like a lot of characters and plot lines had a lot more potential to be explored properly. Even GRR Martin stated that there's enough content for at least 11 seasons going up to 13. We could have gone to 11, 12, 13 seasons, but uh, they, I guess they wanted a life. Uh, <laughs> so you wanted it to keep going. Well, it, it, you know, if you've read the, my novels, you, you know there was enough material for, for more seasons. Uh, they made certain cuts. He is right. There is a lot of content still left to be shown. And even though I think the showrunners did a great job in the first couple seasons, along the way I felt like things were being cut out and were simply forgotten. Characters, plot lines just got dropped because the showrunners wanted to rush towards the ending or simply didn't know what to do with it. So here are a couple of things that in my opinion were forgotten, in combination with some extra research on the matter. In this video I will deal with forgotten characters. Mira. Mira has been with Bran from season 3 till season 7, sworn to keep Bran safe and she did so successfully. They had a heartbreaking goodbye where Mira believes that the real Bran died in that cave. My brother died for you. Hodor and Summer died for you. I almost died for you. Bran! I'm not really. Not anymore. I remember what it felt like to be Brandon Stark. But I remember so much else now. You died in that cave. Some might say that this has been a satisfying ending and I can definitely see why. Knowing Game of Thrones, happy endings are not one to count on. So Mira's send off after sacrificing so much is heartbreaking, but in a way realistic. Especially now that Bran is acting like a cyborg. But what happened after this? During the long night, where was she? Wouldn't she want to help out the Starks to fight to the death? She was part of the important mission after all. And it would have seemed nice to see her in the final episode, because apparently Bran is Bran somewhat again. The thing that bothered me most is that House Reed has been loyal to the Starks for years now. A bond that should have been even grown closer due to the connection with Ned Stark and the next character I think should have had some screen time in the show. Mira and Jojen's dad Howlin' Reed. Now this is a character I thought I would definitely see because he is the last survivor that should know the secret about Jon. At the Tower of Joy he is badly injured but it is known that he survives because Jojen mentions him. You have the sight too. When I told my father about your father, the first time in my life I saw him cry. Your father is Howland Reed? Saved my father's life during the rebellion. Father told you about the rebellion. I never did. I saw that too. Now you can't tell me that he didn't know about John because Ned went up alone and left with the baby in his arms. He must have known the secret. Yet this is never mentioned again. Next to this, where was Howland Reed when the Starks needed them at the Battle of the Bastards and the fight against the dead? According to lore, they have been loyal to the Starks when Rickard Stark was king, which is way before Ned and his adventures at the Tower of Joy. So where is he? I'm aware that in the books, Grey Water Watch that is being housed by House Reed is almost impossible to contact with ravens and hard to find because it's said that the Grey Water Watch is always on the move. But I find it hard to believe that such a trusted ally of the Starks are unaware of their situation and are unable to help in the time of need. This felt very empty to me and many believed it would be him to reveal Jon's true heritage and not Bran or Sam who randomly comes across a piece of information about the matter. So to me at least, I think he really deserved another appearance in the show. Now let's switch to some characters that deal with some of the prophecies. Quaithe. 
Quaithe is first seen in season 2 where she plays a small but major role in Danny's storyline. She warns Jorah that Danny, her dragons are going to get stolen and this happens. In the book she plays a much larger role, giving cryptic messages where even Yoda would have troubles with. But I don't want to compare the books with the show. However, the reason we would see her again is because of her mask and symbols on it. Usually when a masked person is introduced, you eventually want to find out who the person is. And you eventually do. It is an easy tool to set up for viewers to get interested in the character. And while looking at her mask, it has similar markings to that of the Red Priests. Which brings me to the next character. Kin, Farah and the other Red Priests. This is a character that I really really thought I would see again. And to be honest, I would really love to see her again. Cause damn, Mel got some competition. I don't know if there's some kind of checklist to become a red priest, but if there is, being hot is one of them. Well, maybe not for the men. Also, yes, I know the necklace makes them look younger, etc. But damn. To my girlfriend, I I'm kidding. I love you. I love you. Uh, you're the most beautiful, of course. <coughs> Anyways, back to Kinvara. She makes an appearance in season six, where she apparently helps Tyrion restore some of the peace in Marine, because she believes that Danny is the princess that was promised and she's able to convince others to believe in it as well. The reason I thought she would make a definite appearance is because she, like other priests, served the Lord of Light. Well, according to the religion, and this is from the Game of Thrones Wikipedia, the religion of the Lord of Light is centered on belief in the existence of two deities. In the words of Melisandre, a god of light and love and joy, and a god of darkness, evil and fear, eternally at war. Rawler, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, is the god of fire, which provides light, heat and life, and struggles against darkness, cold and death, represented by an opposing deity, the Great Other. AKA, and you probably hear some similarities with the White Walkers. To be clear, the Great Other are not the White Walkers, it is a deity. But there is a known theory that the White Walkers are the champions of the Great Other. So, what's going on here? Thoros and Melisandre, who were eagerly trying to fight the death and play a role in it, where in God's name are the other Red Priests while the Long Night was going on? Isn't this the one true call their Lord calls them out for? This had me so confused. I honestly thought Mel was going to gather the other Red Priests to help out with the fight against the dead. Can you imagine how epic that would have been? I know that is a personal request or fan fiction if you want to call it that, but I do think the writers just forgot that there are other red priests out there and it feels like such a lost opportunity. Plus, come on man. Damn. Danny's Forgotten Allies, Dario and the Second Sons. Dario has been a loyal follower of Danny since season 3 because he loves her and believes in her. Danny leaves him to take care of Maureen because she can't love him back and doesn't want to bring him along. Even though Dario doesn't like it, he follows command anyways. So what happened to him after the Great War and after Danny's death? A mystery we will never find out, at least not from the show. Alaria Sand. Now most people will agree that the storyline of Dorne was boring after the death of Oberyn Martell. I don't think the writers had any clue what to do with the storyline at some point. But Alaria becomes allies with Danny to get her revenge on the Lannisters. Now on their way to lay siege upon King's Landing, they get ambushed by Euron and her and her daughter Tyin get captured by him. Cersei gives her daughter the kiss of death and lets Alaria watch her daughter die. Now it is unclear how long it takes before the poison takes your life, but Cersei promised she would keep Alaria alive long enough to watch her daughter die. This was the last we have seen or heard from her. She probably died when the whole keep sort of collapsed, but I don't know, it feels strange that she's never mentioned again. On to some other characters that we do see in the end, but where the hell were they during the last seasons? Robin Aaron. The last time we see him is in season 6, where Littlefinger convinces him to go help out Sansa with his army. But what happened after? After Jon is king of the north, did he just support that claim? Then there is Edmure. He was captured by the Freys. But Arya killed them at the start of season 7. Where has he been all this time? He should be free now that his capturers are all dead. He could have tried to rally his people and go help out the Starks. So where have you been bro?
So these are characters that I thought I would definitely see more of in the series because of their history and setup given by the writers. But these are just a few. There are many more characters that have played a significant role in earlier seasons and were set up for further character buildup. On this website you can check out a few for yourself and see if you can remember some of them. It's pretty interesting. There will be a link in the description. To me it feels like many things were cut out from the series. Simply because the sail routers just didn't know what to do with it and wanted to rush towards a end. It's very unfortunate when there is so much more to explore in the world of Game of Thrones. GRR Martin was right that there is definitely enough content to make at a minimum 11 full seasons. Yet we had to do with 8, where 2 of them had less episode compared to their predecessors. So I don't find it strange that a lot of fans feel disappointed by the ending of Game of Thrones. A rich, character driven, epic fantasy, what it started out to be, started to become a shallow Hollywood blockbuster spectacle. And I haven't even shown you a lot of plot lines, abilities like Bran Swarging and many more things that they have just forgotten. Things like this. If you look at these scenes, what is missing here? Yes, indeed, King's Landing has somehow teleported itself to a different location. No forest, no mountains, what the hell is going on here? If you guys are interested, I will be covering stuff like this in my next Game of Thrones video. If you have any suggestions or anything to add, feel free to comment below. That will be the end of this video. If you want to see more Game of Thrones content, I will be making at least 3 more videos in between the other content I produce on here. After that, I'm going to switch over to different types of movies, series, etc. So don't subscribe for just Game of Thrones content. I would of course appreciate a sub, a comment, a like and I will try to make it worth your while. Thanks for watching anyways, signing out.